this first game of the West semifinals. The Phoenix Suns have led by as many as 14 points, up by 10 here at halftime. With Hall of Famer Doug Collins, Kevin Harlan, thank you so much for joining us. Doug, the beginning of the game for Steve Nash was spectacular. The 17 points. The first. Yeah, Kevin, when we came walking out, I saw Steve and I went over to him and I said, was that on design, by design that you got off to that great start? And he said, you know, I felt really good. Number one, number two, I saw a lot of gaps in their defense. And I talked to Chip England, the assistant coach for San Antonio. I said, what didn't you like about that first half? And he said, the way we guarded Steve Nash on the screen roll. So Steve took advantage of that, got a team off to a very, very good start tonight. Points in the paint were a big story in that first half. Yeah, when you think of the San Antonio Spurs, you think of their guards in the paint. It's been actually the Phoenix Suns guards in the paint. Steve Nash had 10 in the first quarter. Amari Stoudemire with that quick speed. And he went right by Tim Duncan. Steve Nash, uh, once again in that first half, was uh, sensational getting to the rim. They posted Jason Richardson and I mean, 36 points in the paint for the Phoenix Suns, plus 18. The mid-range game, you see where it is. The Spurs thought they did a nice job chasing the Suns off that three-point line, but also the Spurs were not happy at all with the way they played offense. So let's see if they're much crisper in this second period, this third period here, as they try to get out of the gate a little bit quicker than they did to start this game. And let's take a look at our Corona Stats leaders through one half of basketball. You can see the high scores. Nash had 17, as we said before, in the first quarter. He had four in the second. And interestingly enough, Tony Parker is starting here in this uh, third period instead of uh, George Hill. So it looks like that Greg Popovich feels like he needs to get off to a good start. George Hill got in foul trouble trying to play against uh, Jason Richardson down on the post. So now we'll have to look at the matchup. If Grand Hill guards Manu Ginobili, that's going to put Steve Nash on Parker. Let's see if Parker tries to get Nash involved in a lot of screen rolls here off Duncan to start this period. Parker and Ginobili. The dice to Duncan down below. Jefferson, that is the five out there for the San Antonio Spurs. Jaron Collins doubles now with Hill on top. They swing it to Parker. It goes over Stoudemire. Good way for San Antonio to start the second half. Yeah, I think what Greg Popovich is doing, he wants Nash to have to work on the defensive end. He had way too much freedom in the first half, so with Parker starting, Nash now has to guard Tony Parker. He cannot guard Ginobili. It's a bad pass, and it's going to be a good start here for the San Antonio Spurs. Four quick points, and they are right back in this ball game now, down only six points. Nash with his third turnover, Doug. And seven, as Coach told you earlier, in game six in Portland, double team inside of Arnie Stoudemire. They've got no answer for him down low. He's got such great confidence right now. After that first half, I think he feels like he could score on anybody in that paint. Nash and Parker, Stoudemire, McDyess, Ginobili, dishing off. To McDyess, he knocks it down. He was a big factor in the Spurs winning that first round against Dallas. Yeah, I was kidding him before the game. I said, what is it with all these Alabama guys? They just start playing in the playoffs. He's Robert Ory has passed once again. But Robert Ory is a longtime big shot Bob here in San Antonio, winning the championship there with the Spurs. Now it's Antonio McDyess, the star from Alabama, who stepped in and trying to win a championship here. Gentlemen. Diving his way into Stoudemire. And Stoudemire picks up his second. Marty Snyder, what do you have? Kevin talked to Greg Popovich on his way out of the locker room. He told me that Tim Duncan's left knee was a little bit more of a scare than anything else. Remember, it was hyperextended towards the end of that quarter, and uh, he's going to be fine in this quarter. But Pop told me what he talked about when uh, you talked about Chip England. He said, we've got to stop Steve Nash. I feel like we should be down by 25 points. He said, we've guarded the three terrifically tonight. He said, but if we can stop those penetration baskets, we can still win this game. There's Mano Ginobili at the free throw line, and Chips away a bit with that Phoenix right, lead, which was as high as 14 points. Just finishing up Doug on McDice. He, he was so physical in that first series against Dirk Nowitzki and Dallas. And that was his job, really, to try to make Dirk Nowitzki work as hard as he can. They, they did not want to double and triple team Nowitzki where he could free up those shooters for the uh, Dallas Mavericks, and he did a nice job. And Dirk was terrific. He had 33 in that game, six, 25 in the second half. It's just not enough to beat this first. Collins a screen. Nash puts down a triple. The screen was on Parker. It's McDyess and now Parker. Two minutes gone here in the third. Tony Parker over speed. McDyess saves it, but right back to Nash, who is 11 of 15. 
Ginobili now on him. Parker's watching him. See if Green tries to cash in. He does. Nice double by Duncan and the Ducks who came in there. High the other way. What's in the triple on the fly? Off transition, those threes. I know they work for Phoenix. What about the threes off transition for San Antonio? Well, they really don't shoot them that often. They do not want to get in that kind of game for the Suns, but the manager Ginobili had a great look at that. That's only the second three of the game. It's a shoot by Duncan. That's a bad shot there. It's going to lead to another fast break. It's back-to-back -back defensive stops, and you know they're going to get in trouble with those kind of Woo. shots. Alvin Gentry cannot like those last two possessions. going to take a timeout. And you want to push the pace, but you want to take good shots against the Spurs. They're an opportunistic, fast-breaking team. And you saw Ginobili with the three, followed up by Richard Jefferson with a reverse layup. But the Ginobili pulling up, knocking down the three. The Spurs on a 13-7 run. They're much more fluent offensively here to start this third quarter. The Suns are going to have to talk about it as Duncan lays the ball in. Here's Nash. About three minutes gone here in the third quarter. The dice comes out on Nash. Collins is picked up by Ginobili. And Jaron Collins with the offensive board. That's a timeout. And that's exactly what he gets with Ginobili's smothering defense down low. So they take a pause right here. Back in Phoenix early in the third quarter, the Suns clinging to a four-point lead. Last two huddles, Alvin Gentry has told his guys, listen, we need to play our pace of the game. Move the ball, get it up court quickly, but let's take smart shots. He said, we're a better team than this, guys. We're taking some dumb shots when we are in transition. Kevin? Right, Marty. And, and what it's led to is seven fast break points for the uh, San Antonio Spurs, who took advantage of those bad shots. Let's see if they can execute and get a play out of this timeout. Stoudemire in the dice, Stoudemire 5 of 10. Duncan came over there, gets the block. He's got two, and this will trigger Tony Parker the other way. Again, Parker starting the second half. Duncan a screen, the weaving Parker. It's a good move by uh, Greg Popovich to start Tony Parker, because now you've got to make Nash work, and let's see if it takes a little bit of his legs away from him, because now he's got to chase Tony Parker around all those screens. 15 for Parker. 7 of 13 for the night. Here's Richardson picked up by Jefferson. Shot clock is down to 8. This is when the Suns get in trouble right here when they have to play half-court offense against this Spurs half-court defense. That's why you got to get defensive stops, Kevin. Right now with the Spurs scoring, they're getting their defense back. And Tony Parker is going to work. So San Antonio is on a 9 to nothing run, and they have tied the game. They have not led tonight. It's Stoudemire inside. McDice was defending. It's off of the Phoenix Sun. And that's all McDice wants him to do. Take tough shots. But watch again. They're screening Steve Nash. He tries to go all the way underneath the screen. And Tony Parker has become so good at that medium range jump shot. I talked about Chip England a while ago, one of the assistant coaches of the Spurs. He's really worked with Tony Parker on his shooting. Seven of eight, that means the Spurs are taking the ball in out of the basket. They're not running, they're getting in the half court, and now the Spurs are starting to take control. And Fry has just come in for Jerry Collins. Pick and roll, Parker to Duncan. Snaps it outside, Jim over the three, good! And San Antonio has their first lead of the game. Now is when the, uh, the Suns need poise. Now you're going to feel the angst in this building. This is the last thing the Phoenix Suns fans wanted to see. Now you've got to have poise. You've got to execute. Fry uncovered for three. Now seven consecutive misses for the Phoenix Suns as Parker comes the other way. Parker, by the way, off the bench with 17. Inside Ginobili. Rebound by Stoudemire, clutching on to number eight with his 11 points. Fry, Richardson for three. Isn't it amazing when you get a defensive stop that it leads to a transition three-point minute? Because now the Spurs are trying to run back and find their own people. That's when the Suns are so good shooting threes. We said that all season. They're better in transition, throwing up those three-point shots. Because what happens is if your big runs the floor, a lot of times he's picked up by a smaller player, and then no one is talking who is going to get Jason Richardson? They just cannot get there. And that's when the Suns are at their best in the open floor. But to do that, you've got to get defensive stops. 
All right, just picked up his third personal foul. San Antonio shooting 80% here in this third quarter. They've made adjustments on the half time. And as Parker starting, it's changed the uh, tempo of the game. And again, it's for Steve Nash to defend Parker. And Ginobili is starting to warm up now as well. He's now 6 of 11. He'd gotten off to a cold start. He has 21. Parker has 17. So those two guards now with 38 points. Still a lot of time to play in this game. Parker, Duncan, seven. That's the surprise of the veteran Tim Duncan. Look at Alvin Gentry, got some coach of the year votes. Eventually went to Scott Brooks of Oklahoma City. Another three, Richardson. That time the close is by Duncan and saved by Jefferson. Here comes Ginobili and they race the other way of San Antonio. Tim Duncan. Boy, he is money from outside the lane, banking at home and giving the Spurs the lead. Is that money in the bank, and you should say, right? <laughs> 11 for Tim Duncan. Parker on Nash. Hand off nice. to Richardson. Very nice. A ghost screaming that got him free. Nash loves to drive down and then sort of wheel back and get guys slashing off to him. A lot of times he'll hand that ball off to Stoudemire. That time, it was Jason Richardson. 17 for Richardson. 13 shots tonight. The screen roll. Parker this time finds Jefferson inside. Nick Tice. Boy, the San Antonio Spurs look like a totally different team offensively in this third quarter. Tony Parker has made a huge difference being out there with the starters. That little play I just talked about when yep. Nash drives. This time he drops it off for Amari Stoudemire. It seems like a little dribble handoff, and he actually screens the guy. That's playing Amari Stoudemire. That's a big money play for them. Nice field goal. Nash comes up with his seventh assist. Watch it. Now watch what Nash does. He's going to drive here. Little drive. And then watch Jason Richardson. He's going to pass right off his tail to get the handoff for the easy score. Then they run it to the other side for Amari Stoudemire. Back-to-back -back field goals. He's got a tie game. As we take a look at the Ford driving force, that Popovich Duncan tandem dog has had a lot of postseason success. It sure has. We see a lot of Phil Jackson up there, too. Scotty yes. Pippen, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant. How about Tim Duncan and Pop? Great, great stars, great coaches. That's 14 championships up there between those two guys. The big three. You've Pete on them tonight. They've had great starts to this second half for the game. They've accounted for 49 of San Antonio's 71 points. Well, the Spurs are 10 of 12 this quarter. So they've outscored the Phoenix Suns by 24 to 14. Their offense has been very efficient, which helped their defense. And right now they're back in this ball game. George Hill is in for Ginobili. Brian continues to take the place of Collins. One on one with Duncan. Richardson grabs the ball. Here comes Stevie Nash. He's got 26. Let's see if George Hill does a better job here in this period than he did on Nash in the first quarter when Nash had his way. But the goal is on by him. Goes in the gap to San Antonio defense, which has improved greatly in the postseason. The shot clock is down to six for Grant Hill. This is over Parker. And the rebound is lassoed by McDice, who claims his seventh. Grant Hill is on Parker, the screen by Duncan, and opens up Tony. Richards at the rebound. Grant Hill. As he was working into Jefferson, McDice steps out of bounds. Phoenix is ball. Kevin's going to be very interesting here. 4 6 to go in this quarter. Tie game, and you know how Alvin Gentry loves to go to that bench. Yep. And that fourth quarter is going to be very interesting here if the Suns are behind. How much you trust that bench? To start this fourth quarter that's been so good for him. Or does he start getting his bench here in a little early and maybe change a little bit of substitution pattern? So now we're starting to get a little time now where when you start coaching ahead uh, to get into that fourth quarter. Bonner for McDennis and over Bonner, the shot by Nash with 28. Well, we talked about how opposing teams want to make Nash a score. He's got seven points in this third quarter. Seven assists for Nash in the game. Fry is watching Duncan. Doubled by Nash, who slips. And that means Hill comes it in to Tim. And Tim Duncan, 5 of 10, 13 points. Nash. 
Jefferson knocks it away in a pass intended for Amari Stoudemire. They double punt. It slides inside, and a foul is called. Duncan, who went right into Grant Hill, who took it. That's Grant Hill walking. Or you see him stepping over and taking that charge. Little plays here that change games. Grant Hill gets outside the lane, and you see Duncan run right through him. Duncan thought he had stepped to the side, but took that blow right in the chest. Once again, uh, the nice defensive play by Grant Hill. Hill is gone. Dudley has come in the game. Nash and Stoudemire. Dudley frying. Richardson the Phoenix Five off balance. Nash, Parker defending. Steve Nash has put in 30. 30 points, Doug, on 18 shots. Because they're trying to take away Amari Stoudemire on that roll, and Nash is keeping the dribble alive and getting that pain to be all kinds of motor. Hungary to 15. Duncan with the rebound. Stoudemire cleans it up. Nash by Jefferson and to Bonner. Out to Dudley. Over to Nash and picked up by Bonner. With the mismatch, Steve. Fry for three. It's a big, big stretch for the Phoenix Suns because if they can get a little bit of a lead, it's going to allow Alvin Gentry to have so much more confidence in that bench. Big two minutes and 30 seconds here by both teams. Fry is at two threes. He's got six. Here comes Parker. Sends it out to Jefferson. Rebound by Stoudemire. He's got 10 with a double-double and 13 points. Nash finds Richardson. What a pass by Steve Nash. What a pace to the game. Richardson's got 19. Parker. Hill wide open for three. Foley ball to the 11th rebound for Stoudemire. A seven up and one for Phoenix. On the outside, Richardson, three. Clear. Jefferson in to Dudley. Count it. And it's a foul. Jared Dudley picks it up. What a run after taking a three-point lead. Phoenix turns it on and recaptures the advantage and goes up 83-75. Yes. Dudley picks up number three. And Steve Nash right in the middle of everything. You cannot leave Channing Fry. He knocks down the three. How about this beautiful back door by Jason Richardson? Jason Richardson and follows it up with a three. Richardson with 22 points. They have won 10 straight games with him getting 20 points. Let's see if they can make it 11. But, Kevin, this spurt here at the end of the quarter, what it means to the Phoenix Suns is so, so important with Alvin Gentry now being able to go to that bench. Bonner, Ginobili, Richardson defending. That's an offensive foul. Ginobili will pick up number three. A lot of this happened, too, when Tony Parker sat down. Now, that's not saying it had anything to do with George Hill being on the floor, but when Tony Parker sat down, the Suns have really gone on this big spurt. You're right. He's trying. Stoudemire. Right over Blair, who moments ago checked in for Tim Duncan. And Stoudemire has got 15 points and 11 rebounds. Two of five. Shot clock down to eight. Clear with the screen. Here comes Bonner. Off his foot. Picked up by Dudley. Here comes Nash. Richardson on the wing. Hill picks up Steve. Spurs have a foul to give. This match. Hill wants it. From double team. Oh. Bonner to Dudley. Off a of player and off at San Antonio. 27.9 to play in the third. Well, you can see the lack of three-point shooting with this Spurs have really has hurt them, Kevin. They've lost their spacing, and they're not able to do what they used to do, spread that floor and shoot the threes. Well, that's and a the, good point. And the Suns have really done a nice job closing and making them shoot those long twos. For years you've talked about that, Doug. A steal by Ginobili. Into Richardson and Stoudemire. Blair comes down hard.
Ginobili sends it, launches the uncovered three. Richardson is right there. He's got 22. That's not a good shot by Ginobili. Should have held that out for the last possession. Let's see if the Phoenix Suns can take advantage. Richardson. Right in to Bono. Offensive foul called on Jason Richardson. It picks up his second with two tenths of a second to play here in the third quarter, which has been thrilling. Well, the Suns finally are getting some defensive stop. The Spurs scored on 10 out of 12 shots. And in this stretch, the Suns' defense has triggered their offense. They got into the running game. They hit some threes. They got into the open court. What a brilliant finish. The Suns close out the quarter on a 12-2 run. They were down by three. The time after three, we get ready to start the fourth quarter with the Verizon Coaches Corner. Marty signed with Alvin Gidry and Tony Parker started the third there, Coach. How much did that change what you had to do? Well, we had to try to start trapping him a little bit to get the ball out of his hands. You know, we gave up 24 points in the first seven minutes. Our defense have been good up until that point. We got to get it back. And then we got to get out and run like we did the last five minutes of the quarter. Yeah, nice 12 ton, 12 2 run for you guys. But how much can you really use the bench here in the fourth? You have to stick with the starters? Well, no, we're going to use our bench. We'll do that. And uh, then we'll get the start of the low rest and get them back in. But our bench has been good for us the whole year. We just got to make sure that we have confidence in it. Thanks, Alvin. All right. Kevin? Doug Phoenix led by 10 at halftime. They lead by 10 at the end of three. Well, I just think that big spurt there at the end of that the period really gives Alvin a chance now to play his bench with a 10-point lead. If it were tied or a two-point game, he might not be as confident, but right now he could go with his team that have been so good for him. I like he's kept Amari Stoudemire on the floor to go with four bench players, so he has some scoring. Barbosa being one of them, Dudley being another, a three. Robinson is in there working on Bogans. Dragic is the fifth San Antonio, uh, the, the fifth Phoenix Suns player on the floor. Foul goes on Keith Bogans, who picks it up. He's out there with Mason and Ginobili and Blair and George Hill. That sets the laps to begin the fourth quarter here in Phoenix. Dragic finds Amari Stoudemire. Works on Blair. Oh, nice fake. Nice fake. What a move by Amari Stoudemire with 17. That's why I love what Alvin's done. He's got Amari out there that you and he's got three-point shooting. I don't know they have anybody out there that can handle it. Blanc Blair cannot handle Amari Stoudemire on the post that we saw in that last move. They double. Deflected play by the man up front, Amundsen. Here comes Dragic. Stoudemire and Blair adjusting for position. That's a foul. It's going to be called on... Dewan Blair, who picks up his second personal foul for San Antonio. I love you. Turn in your face. You use that speed, the little pump fake. Beautiful footwork for Amari Stoudemire playing brilliant basketball right now. 17 points. More importantly, 11 rebounds. Did not rebound well in that Portland series. Actually, was the third leading rebounder behind Hill and Jason Richardson. So they need his rebounding tonight. He is not good. Ginobili. Roger Mason Jr. picked up by Barbosa. They got a cross matchup now. That's a defensive three second violation. So Blair is watching Stoudemire in one end, but the other end, Blair is picked up by Jerry Lindley in the cross. And, and you can see what Greg Popovich is doing. He's really gone to four guards and Blair out there right now, and he's trying to get some three point shooting. Mason, one of their better three point shooters, and Obi misses the free throw. And Greg Popovich is trying to space his floor a little bit, maybe go to a smaller lineup find some three-point shooting, but his problem right now is going to be able to try to defend Amari Stoudemire. San Antonio, by the way, for the free throw line, plus 11 points tonight over Phoenix. George Hill. Mason defending with Stoudemire. Saved by Dudley, picked up by Trogic. Three on two, Stoudemire. Hit by Mason, who picks up the San Antonio foul, 10-20 to play in the fourth and the second on Roger Mason Jr. You know, I think when I look at the Spurs numbers, they have shot 26 free throws. If I'm not mistaken, they had shot 22 at halftime. So Alvin Gentry talked to his team about too much fouling, and they've done a much better job. Only four free throw attempts here in the second half for the San Antonio Spurs. Stoudemire 2 of 2 from the free throw line. Amazing as being here. Season tickets for the 2010 11 season are on sale right now. Go to NBA.com slash tickets to reserve your seats. The NBA where amazing happens. Now 
now the Suns on top by 14, coach. This is their biggest lead of the night. When they have those little defensive surges. It triggers so much offense for them, and we saw how explosive they are. So if the Spurs can knock down a three, that's a big shot by Bogans. Keith Bogans. Picked up in the offseason, known for his defense and his three-point shooting. Barry's went right there, under 10 to play in the fourth quarter. I think Alvin Gentry wants them to look at that to see if that's a three or not. see if they have a stop at the play. If they do that, it's going to be a walk on Amari Stoudemire. And 13 turnovers now for Alvin Gentry's Phoenix Suns. Take a look here and see it looked like Alvin Gentry said something to... Bennett Salvatore, Bennett ruled it a three, and then when I looked like it Alvin, looked like he wanted Bennett to take a look at that to see if that was a three or not. Ginobili is six to 13. Leaches it in Sarkin for Bogans, who got around two. Amundsen and Dragic defensively for Phoenix. Keith Bogans, a very strong player, known for his defense, but uh, he did a nice job of uh, that time. He screened and then slid right underneath the basket for the easy score. The Suns do not want to fall asleep here after having a 14-point lead. Hoppins in a rugged spinner. They switch on defense. Blair is on Dragic. He deflects the shot. Picked up by Dudley. Shot clock at two. Dragic. Oh! How about that? How about Amundsen and Dudley, the hustle to give them that opportunity and Rockets understanding the shot clock gets the score. That is the energy that this second unit brings for Alvin Gentry and the Suns. Rockets with four. Ginobili for three. Rockets defending. Grant Hill is back in the game. Taking the place of Stoudemire. Boy, now they're really small out there, Phoenix is. Barbosa works on Hill. Slides by Blair. His first step is <laughs> going to be as fast and as good dog as any in the NBA. Well, both teams have gone to small ball, but sometimes it's the extra possession. Dudley finds the loose ball. He gets it to Amundsen, who gets it to Dragic, who beats the shot clock, puts his team back up 11. As Blair picks up his third in a timeout, Phoenix. So we're in, in, in periods of the game where it's close and, you know, the last five minutes, we're in huddles talking about let's get stops. Let's get three, four stops in a row and separate ourselves and get this win. And that's not something that we've talked about, you know, in, in years past. So uh, I think the main thing is that we have toughness, we have grit, uh, and we know how to play defense. Dunk, they took the timeout after San Antonio had a very good start to the second half. Well, the Spurs had made 10 of their first 12 shots in the third quarter. They took that timeout. We went on the run, and the way they did it, 4 of 14 for the Spurs. So that's exactly what Grand Hill was talking about. Get some defensive stops. You see what they have done as the season has gone on after the All-Star break. Their opponents 44% the first round against Portland. They shoot 43% for only 93 points. And here tonight, the San Antonio Spurs are now shooting 47% from the floor. They got up over 53% at one point in time when they had that little spurt. But Kevin, with all the said and done and stuff, it's still only going to be about a 12, 13 point game here. Still plenty of time. The Suns have got to stay up with their defense because the Spurs can attack quickly. What a pace to this game. 23 fast break points right now. For the Phoenix Suns, I'm not sure that when Greg Popovich sees that, he's going to be happy with that transition defense. We talked about that being a real key in this series. Ginobili and Hill, Bogan, Duncan is in for Blair. Mason screened by Duncan, wide open three by Roger Mason. Fry is in the game, and he picks it up. And it gives to Barbosa. The Suns started the second half, 4-12. Well, now they're 10 to 15 because their defense has created offense. They got out of the fast break. They got those easy scores. Good when point. the Spurs were scoring, they were going into a half-court game and could not score. So that's the importance, Kevin, of efficient offense and what it leads to you defensively. And when you stop scoring, it opens you up for teams to be able to run out and get easy scores against you. That's why teams want to push tempo and not have to play in a half-court game. Mason picks up his third. Stoudemire is resting with 19 points and 11 rebounds. Amundsen at the free-throw line. And the penalty at 8-10. With uh, Phoenix on top by 13, their lead is bulge as high as 14 equals it right there. TBS in June from executive producer Ice Cube comes a brand new sitcom about one family's journey to get there. Are we there yet? A brand new series 
It premieres June 2nd at 9, 8 Central, only on TBS. Mason comes up with it. Approaching 8 to play here in the 4th. Saved by Duncan. Hill fights his way through. You mentioned this earlier about Grant Hill. He's not just content guarding one guy. He's got to guard the entire floor for the Suns. Well, let's see what he does now. He's been guarding Ginobili. Parker is coming in the game. Let's see if Grand Hill goes over to Parker. They're going to leave Barbosa on him. So when Nash comes back in the game, I'll get here. Now they've got Drogic on Tony Parker. I like that matchup. So now you keep Grand Hill on Mount Ginobili. Try to keep him calm down a little bit because he needs to that spurt where he's got about seven or eight points in a hurry. Hawkers come in for Mason for San Antonio. Dudley is coming from Robinson for Phoenix. Shot clock is at seven for Tim Duncan, picked up by Fry. Hill come over and try to help fly with some nice defense inside for the Phoenix Suns and Dragic the other way. Well, Channing Fry actually did a pretty good job in the first round on the Marcus Aldridge, so his defense is uh, a big plus right now. Barbosa into Duncan with the screen by Fry and picked up by Ginobili who gets the rebound. Hill is there, Duncan has screened the double on Ginobili. Duncan and Fry. Was in there trying to hedge. Fry picks up the foul. Just his fourth personal. What they're doing with Duncan, they don't want to double team him when he catches the ball, Kevin. So what they're doing is they're waiting for him to start his move and then they're digging down from the top. You talked about Dudley digging down there. And then when Duncan saw that happening, he took the ball and tried to get into the shooting motion. And watch what happens there. They're going to throw the ball in the post. Watch Dudley now. He doesn't go anywhere. Now, watch when he starts bouncing the ball. That's when he's going to dig down and just try to fake at him and force him to try to make a play on the dribble. They're going to say now that he is not in the act of shooting, and they will take the ball sideline out of bounds. Ginobili into Duncan. Great pass by Mano Ginobili on top. He comes up with his fifth assist. And Tim Duncan's got 15 points and eight rebounds. It's small ball right now for the Spurs. It's four guards and Duncan. Rockets weaving through all those players. This match against Duncan. Shot clock at nine. Dragic. Rebound by Duncan. Ginobili was leaking early. Here comes Hill and Mano. Slides in for two. Ginobili has got a San Antonio high 23 points. Ten point game. Dragic for three. They don't need that shot right there. They need another run out for the Spurs. If they score here, look for Alvin to get a timeout. Parker. Bogan. Dudley's on Parker. Dragic is on Bogan. Fry is right to Duncan. Now the switch. Dudley now goes on Parker. Tony Parker just picks things up and every time he comes in. You call it, Doug. Here's a timeout by Gentry. With a nice runner right there inside by Tony Parker. 19 points on 17 shots. Well, Alan Gentry giving Danny Fry an earful on this play. Felt like he's been back there helping. Did not get back into the play. The Spurs now in a 6-0 run. Alvin not happy. The Spurs are not going to go away. The Phoenix Hall of Famer Doug Collins, Kevin Harlan, you see our score. It was 14, now it's down to 8. Doug, there are a lot of demons associated with the Suns <laughs> and Spurs for Suns fans in this series. Yeah, you, it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy, what bad can happen. Right. And that's why I think this next couple minutes for the Suns is very, very important. The Spurs have cut that 14-point lead down to eight in a two-minute period of time. Uh, Steve Nash back in the game, Jason Rich and those guys combined for 52 points. Let's see if the Suns can find a field goal on this possession. The Suns haven't scored from the field in over three minutes. This match, Ginobili knocks it away and picked up by Tony Parker. Ahead to Hill and it's oh, no. Duncan puts it back up and in with 17. Tim Duncan. Nash has got five turnovers, coach. Well, that's what he's been struggling with here in the last few games. He tried to knock down a shot. He misses the three, and here comes the Spurs. And once again, against small ball, they have four smalls out there with Tim Duncan. It's going to be middle screen roll and attack. We call it Duncan inside. Stoudemire reaching in. Amari picks up the foul. That's number three on him. Just finishing up on some of the new players. You mentioned Nash is back in. He's sat out for 20 minutes of real time. And the Suns were minus two, Doug, in the category while he was resting. But you see what's happening now. The momentum has swung to the 
San Antonio Spurs. I talked about Duncan's free throw shooting 49% against Dallas. Let's see how he knocks, uh, walks up to the line to shoot these two. Critical, critical time right now. You got to make free throws when you're trying to play in from behind. And you see what Tim Duncan did. I talked about it's 49%. Uh, tonight he is three for eight. San Antonio. Andrew Nash. Duncan and Stoudemire. Hill and Ginobili. Richardson and Hill. Shot clock at nine. Sticking. Screen by Stoudemire. Switch with Duncan Nash sliding in. Ginobili may have knocked it away, and he did with his defense, and here comes Parker. Ginobili. Bogans. Duncan, oh, with a great twirling move and terrific passing by San Antonio. And Jim Duncan's got 27 coming, Doug, in this fourth quarter. How about the spacing on the floor, though? They have the four, four guards outside the three-point line, and Duncan working the paint. Richardson guarded by Hill. Duncan and Stoudemire waging war on the block. Amari, the dive, the foul. Duncan. Ginobili was in there. Duncan is slow. Maybe Bogans is slow to get up. I think what they're going to rule here, did he Defense. catch that ball in the lower area? If he did, you can say as a secondary fender, come over and take the charge. So let's see if, what you're going to talk about here. But if he caught that ball in that lower quadrant, your secondary fender can take a charge in the restricted area. I think you're going to change this call. San Antonio's ball. See, he catches the ball in that lower quadrant, and your secondary defender can take a charge in the restricted area. See where Amari catches that ball. So when Bogans comes over, his feet are in the area, and he can take that charge there. So the referees got together, and uh, now the Spurs have the ball once again. Stoudemire's got his fourth foul. Bogan inside. Chinobly comes up. Just seven minutes ago, if it gets down to a close game, it is right now. Phoenix on top by one. The drive by Stoudemire, the foul on San Antonio. Hogan's coming across him. As Amari was flying inside with four trying to play, Hogan's picks up number two. See, this is the concern of the Phoenix Suns when you play the Spurs. You're, you're playing this championship pedigree. Four championships from Tim Duncan, three for Tony Parker, Manu Ginobili. Spurs on a 13-0 run here. Now it's going to be important for Amari Stoudemire to stem the tide here and knock in a couple of these free throws. Doug, four minutes ago, it was a 14-point lead for the Phoenix Suns, 94-80. to 80. And, and this is what happens in series. You know, Greg Popovich could not find a group that he liked. All of a sudden, he goes to the bench to Bogans. He puts Hill out there with Parker and Ginobili and plays four around one. Duncan just sort of working the middle, and it has worked uh, beautifully here for the Spurs to get themselves back in this game. Ginobili, Parker, Duncan, Hill, and Bogans for San Antonio. Bogans from Duncan over Richardson. Duncan gets it. Parker, Ginobili, Parker along two over Richardson. Rebound by Amari Stoudemire, number 12, with his 21 points. And here comes Steve Nash, he's got 30. Suns in this fourth quarter, coach, two of ten, three turnovers. Stayed by Stoudemire. Hill into Bogans. And a five. Keith Bogans will pick it up the clock at 3.38 to play. Number three on Bogans of the San Antonio Spurs. And with Hill at the free throw line and the contemplative Greg Popovich, we can tell you the national TV schedule looks this way. TNT tomorrow night, 8 o'clock Eastern time, Atlanta, Orlando, and Utah, and the Lakers. ESPN Thursday, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, Atlanta, Orlando, Game 2. And then ABC this weekend. On Saturday, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, the Lakers and Utah. Some big free throws for Hill, Coach. And at the line tonight, 2 or 3 now with that hit. When you start seeing the matchups out, Roger Mason is coming into the game. He's coming in for Bogans. He's going to give you better three-point shooting. Bogans gives you a little more toughness in size. 
And then Alvin Gentry comes in with Jared Dudley for Channing Fry, feeling he needs a little bit more defense on the perimeter because the, uh, the Spurs have gone to a small lineup. So you're starting to see these coaches match up with one another. And they're going to have a little time out here as the Suns are going to talk about it up by four. Got to keep the pace of the game up. We're doing a good job. Just keep the pace of the game up. Guys, we got to play every play. Hey, he made a hustle play and the other guys didn't hustle down. We got to, hey, every play has got to be the play. That was two huddles ago, Alvin Gentry talking to his Phoenix Suns team. In this huddle, he said, guys, all I need from you is three and a half minutes. I promise you, we're going to make a name for ourselves in playing defense. And he pointed at Amari Stoudemire and said, it's got to start with you. You've got to slow down Tim. He's the one really killing us. Speaking of Tim Duncan, Kevin. Thank you, Marty. They are the number one offense in the NBA, the Phoenix Suns. But as Marty says, defense now has got to be their calling card up by four, three and a half left in regulation. Activity and movement, Doug, that's been kind of the, the key word most of this season, especially the second half of the season for this Phoenix team. Well, that's what you have to do, you know, Kevin. To be a good offensive team, you've got to have good spacing. You've got to have player movement, ball movement, the ball. You find the open man side to side. And that's when any offensive team is at their best. Let's see what Greg Popovich is going to get coming out of this timeout. Richard Jefferson back in the game after being on the bench for a long time. Jefferson comes in for Mason to switch on defense. Here comes Ginobili. It's just Dudley defending. It's Tony Parker. Shot clock is down to seven. Looking on Richardson. Tony Parker. Parker Doug off the bench in the beginning of the game. Starting the second half has 21 points on 19 shots. Stoudemire and Duncan. What a shot. Woo. Wow, just a mental job that time. Duncan at his hand. Looked like all over the ball, and Stoudemire just willed that shot in. What a great play. That's the first hit. Three-point line. Jefferson is not comfortable shooting the three, so he's in in a long two, which makes rotation a lot easier to be able to help on the screen roll and get back to that guy in the corner who's looking to shoot a long two instead of a three. Jefferson only one of four in the playoffs, including the first round. Here is Park. Duncan, Ginobili, shot clock at four, defending Richardson, rebound by Stoudemire. He's got 13 rebounds and 23 points. And there's that some of the defense that Alvin Gentry wanted. That was a very good possession for the Suns. Bench, Dudley, Fred Hill. Parker with the rebound. Into Dudley. Oh, and a rebound for San Antonio. And Richardson easily gets it for number five in that category for him. Now, fortunate at that time for the Phoenix Suns because Parker got right on top of the basket and missed a pretty easy shot. Ginobili's on Nash. Look at the spacing of the Suns yep. all behind the three point line. Good point. This is Nash. a foul it's on Steve Nash it is his third personal foul playing with a bad right hip looks pretty spry tonight in 35 minutes 30 points Ginobili Phoenix has a foul again this is Hill from outside Dudley with the rebound George Hill to a seven now those are the threes he hit against Dallas he hit those big threes against Dallas tonight it just wasn't there for him the shooting in the fourth quarter. Nash, Hill, Richardson for three. This is their favorite play. They call this short. It's a screen roll. They throw it to Grant Hill. He finds opposite side. That's either Channing Fry or Jason Richardson. This time it's Jason Richardson, the X Factor. He has 25. The last 10 times he's done that, they have won. Is he going to make it? We're back in Phoenix, Arizona, revisiting the cold hard facts presented by Cool's Lights. Well, we talked about the Suns winning this game tonight for their psyche. What it would do. It looks like they're going to protect home court here tonight. Pace of the game, 30-point quarters tonight. They get off to a great start. Steve Nash, 31 in that 
first quarter for the Suns. How about the screen roll game? So Amari Stoudemire, 23 points, 16 in the paint. Nash has 30, 10 to 6. He has 16 in the paint. And then the X Factor, Jason Richardson with that big three. Will that be enough to close it out? Mike, you said 10 straight when he's hit that mark, Doug. You're all over it. Closing out quarters has been important, too, for the Suns in this game. Second quarter, they were plus six. Third quarter, they were plus ten. So far, they're plus seven in the fourth. You can see the run in over three minutes. Dudley, watch it, Parker. Bill is all over Ginobili. A screen. Parker finds it back and tries inside with a Phoenix foul. 111 to play. Stoudemire was in there as the line of defense and picks up his fifth. Stoudemire, Hill, Dudley, and Richardson, the Phoenix Five. Duncan, Ginobili, Hill, Parker, and Jefferson, the San Antonio Spurs. Five. Tony Parker will be at the free throw line. And Doug tonight, 101, 21 points overall and 20 shots. Well, again, this will only be the seventh and eighth free throw of the second half for the San Antonio Spurs. Alvin Gentry told his team they were fouling too much at halftime. They've made the adjustments. We talk about the Phoenix Suns and their shooting. And they shoot 45% or better in the playoffs. They continue to win tonight. They're going to be 5-0 and as tonight they're shooting over 50%. They're the number one shooting team in the league, number one behind the three-point line. They're a great free throw shooting team. So they play good defense the way they shoot the ball. They are very tough to beat. That was a historic three-point percentage, too, this season. Second best ever. 41, as you mentioned. And here's Nash. Parker, defender. Screened by Stoudemire. Parker sticks right with it. Shot clock is down to six. This is Jefferson on Hill. Grant Hill puts in his first field goal since 11:28 left in the first quarter. He hit the first field goal of the game for the Phoenix Suns. A big one right there. Duncan is screened. Ginobili driving inside. Hill was taken out. Ginobili flies inside, and he's got 27 to lead San Antonio. Nash behind him was Hill, who draws the foul. He's got four. And you foul Steve Nash. You might as well give him two points because he's a 90% shooter. But look at Grant Hill gets hit with a screen by Tim Duncan. Ginobili gets all the way to the paint. But again, Kevin, the spacing on the floor for the Spurs is so different. They do not have that three-point shooting. Used to be Bruce Bowen out there knocking down shots. Robert Ory, some of these guys shooting those threes. And they are not nearly as good a three-point shooting team, so their spacing isn't quite as good on the floor. And you can help a little bit more on Duncan and get back. They'll be back here on Wednesday for game two. Game three will be on ESPN. Doug and I will be in San Antonio on Mother's Day. It takes you through the first four games. Nash again. Steve Nash. 32 points, 10 assists, 4 of 4 from the line in 36 minutes. Parker, the acceleration. Foul! Count it. He'll go to the line. Tony Parker, 25 points. He and Nash have put on an outstanding offensive show tonight. And, and the big question to me is going to be, as we see Tony Parker go away from the screen and reject it, they call the pushing foul there on Jason Rich. It looked like he might have just pushed him. See if he gets his hand right there on his hip just a little bit. And the foul call, but will Greg Popovich start Tony Parker in game two? Will we see that adjustment? Well, Pippen may be off to a better start. George Hill did not have a good game tonight against Steve Nash to start the game. Nash got off to a great start on all those pick and rolls. So as the chess game will start here in the playoffs, once you lose a game, you start trying to make some different decisions. And we'll see what Pop's going to do for game two. Parker has nine in the quarter for San Antonio, trailing by five. Half minute regulation, Phoenix on top by five. They've led by as many as 14. Coming up next inside the NBA, EJ, the Jet, Sir Charles. Analysis and post-game reaction from tonight's two playoff games. And tomorrow night, playoff action continues on TNT. Atlanta, Orlando, game one. Utah Lakers, game two. Coverage, eight o'clock. Eastern time. Yeah, that just because something worked in the first series doesn't mean it's going to necessarily be carried over to the second. Now you've got to make adjustments based on personnel. Ginobili's going to trip Nash. He's going to go down, and he'll pop up and shoot his two free throws. But that's how every series changes. 
You know, you had uh, in the first series, you had a Dirk Nowitzki, and what you had to do with a guy like that, you didn't see as much screen roll with a uh, Jason Kidd as you're seeing with Steve Nash. And as I said before, when this series over is over, the team that is going to be able to do the best job with their screen roll defense with either corralling Steve Nash with Amari Stoudemire rolling and those three-point shooting, and for the Suns, you've got Ginobili, you've got Parker running off Duncan, all those screens, whichever team can find a way to play the screen roll the best, I think is going to win this series. But just a big win here tonight for the Suns if they can hold on. Just for their psyche, Kevin, yes. to win game one. The last two times they've had home court against the Spurs and had the better record, the Spurs have won game one and gone on to win the series. In the regular season, Phoenix beats San Antonio two out of three times. Nash hits the back end of two. The lead is six. Timeout San Antonio. Suns went into the penalty at 8-10. They've gone 12 of 14 from the free throw line in the pressure pack fourth quarter tonight. Doug in that first series for the San Antonio Spurs, they faced Jason Kidd. Now in this series, they've got Steve Nash. Pretty daunting task for even an experienced team like the San Antonio Spurs. Well, you know, we heard Charles Barkley and Kenny Smith, Ernie Johnson, talking tonight to Chris Paul in the studio. And it's out, this is a point guard driven league now. And you can see tonight, Steve Nash, the impact he's had on his team. Tony Parker, when he came in, the minutes he's played. Two brilliant point guards here tonight in the league full of great, great point guards. George Hill has nine. Stoudemire knocks it out of bounds. 19 seconds on the shot clock. And you see just under 24 to play in regulation. Greg Popovich is so good at matchups. I'll be dying to see what he does for game two. He'll change things up in the adjustments he'll make. Well, remember they lost uh, game one in Dallas. And he told me again, uh, reading a lot of stuff he said I had a guy play like a bunch of dogs tonight those guys came out and played a lot better in game two and one to steal the home court well the three-point shot dog has disappeared for San Antonio in this fourth quarter one of eight from beyond the arc for the Spurs in the fourth the fans are their feet they can smell a win you've said it all night as the foul goes on that dice for the second time the psyche of the team the psyche of the fans battling the demons from Playoffs pass between these two franchises. Now, if you're the Phoenix Suns, you say you got to get real greedy and you got to hold home court, get a decisive 2 0 lead. And if you're the San Antonio Spurs, you know you're coming in game two to try to get a split and go home. And if you've done that, regardless of what's happened here tonight, you're the Spurs, you go home to the home court. You have to feel very good about yourself. They just went home in the last series, beat the Dallas Mavericks, who had the best road record in the NBA. And the Mavs were not able to beat them on their court. So that's why it's so important for the Phoenix Suns to hold home court. Tony Parker racing the other way for the San Antonio Spurs. This is a big three. Nash defending. Mono Ginobili cannot get it in. Dudley has the ball. Foul called on Ginobili. Just under eight to play. Well, the 100 point mark, too, is going to line a demarcation for San Antonio. When they've held their opponents in this postseason under 100, they've won. When they've allowed more than 100, they've lost. And that's the pace of the game yep. that we talk about. And I think when Greg Popovich looks at it, his transition defense. We talked about that, Kevin. 27 fast break points tonight for the Phoenix Suns. I, I just don't think you're going to be able to give them that many fast break points. And I think Greg Popovich will go back with his coaches. They're going to look at this, figure where some of those points came. But a big part of those came in that one run, Kevin, and the Spurs had taken that three-point lead, and the Suns went on that run to push it for a 10-point game. Most of that was done in transition, shooting threes, and getting to the uh, basket and getting some easy baskets. It's Parker. Hill. The Phoenix Suns will go up one game to none. Over San Antonio is Popovich waves to his former assistant Alvin Gentry, now the head coach of Phoenix. Tim Duncan tonight, 8 of 15 with 20 points and 11 rebounds. Ginobili had 27 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists. Amari Stoudemire tonight with 23. Richardson had 27. They are standing by with our Marty Snyder. Yeah, isn't that amazing, Kevin? 50 points for the Suns between these two guys. Amari, I don't know how many times you guys were up 14. They made several runs, but every time you staved it off, how did you guys do that? Yeah, well, we, we played great defense out there. You know, I think you know, we get a few stops, we were able to get into our offense a lot faster. 
Uh, we got it going offensively. Defensively, we did a phenomenal job out there. So I think that's why we kept the lead. How many times did Alvin preach pace and also defense in huddles tonight? Oh, that's, that's, I lost count. <laughs> yeah, that was the method tonight, you know, uh, keeping our pace offensively and make sure we get stops defensively, rebounding the ball, keeping those guys up the boards was, a, uh, was another key for us. Jason, a huge three for you late in the game. How big was this first game win for the psyche for the Suns team? It was huge for us. Uh, coming in here, we tried, got home court advantage. We want to keep that. We can't let them get away with a home court win here. Their small ball really seemed to hurt you guys. Would you be surprised if Tony Parker doesn't start yeah, game two? Yeah, it really hurt us. We got to find a way to slow him and Manu down. Uh, they did a great job, but we came back and got, got some stops at the end. All right, half a century points for these guys tonight, Kevin. They shot 52% from the field. They had nine more points beyond the three-point arc. They out-rebounded San Antonio tonight, Doug. A terrific game one. Yeah, I can't wait for game two because the Spurs know they got to come in here and find a way to get a split. We'll see you Wednesday. Our producer, Scott Cockrell, our director, Lonnie Dale, our associate directors, Bert Bondi and Lori Brooks. Special thanks to Jeff Paris, Sammy Polis, and Pat McGrath. Kevin Harlan for Doug Collins and Marty Snyder saying goodnight from Phoenix, sending you to Atlanta and inside the NBA with Ernie Johnson. Inside the NBA, presented by Hyundai. Always worth the wait, because you get to hear from the experts. Charles Barkley. Oh, God's an expert, Ernie. Penny the Jed Smith on game one between the Spurs and the Suns and on game two between the Celtics and the Cavs. Who's an expert? God. Oh, God. All the highlights. I'm made in his liking. And all the post-game. <laughs> <laughs> you are, as a matter of fact. <laughs> You're a Chuck, too. <laughs>